we have just found one of the well the largest reptile that we find in this area and it is a crocodile sunning itself on the bank how cool is that i haven't seen i uh, lied i see so many crocodiles while i was on holiday but none of this size now i don't know if this is boris or vladimir i can't seem to tell the two apart really so you'll have to help me but anyways it is a lovely crocodile and look at that gorgeous smile that i was telling you about and this is the smile that you should never trust but isn't that a beautiful shot a golden lit crocodile look at those beautiful big teeth the ones that are quite long are very very white and the others are very very dirty but that is absolutely gorgeous and i'm sure that you will all agree with me now george you said that it could be vladimir possibly we'll have to ask him excuse me mr crocodile what is your name blink once no i'm just joking of course the crocodile's not going to respond to me but i'm surprised that it's uh, actually still here normally when we approach these crocodiles they seem to slink off into the water and disappear into the murky algae but this one is being very kind to us this afternoon so we will try not to move around too much but it isn't just the crocodile that we've got here there's actually lots of things there's even some water thickness just to the right of the crocodile probably only about a meter away about three feet or so away hello and they look very much like the crocodile there's actually three of them they've got their eyes closed four of them the longer you stare there the more those water thickness start to pop up but how funny was that they're all resting look how they've got themselves puffed out their heads rested almost on their chests and their big eyes well that one's eyes is open now but earlier they had their eyes closed they're not quite ready to wake up these are more nocturnal birds they sort of keep to the shadows during the day there's lots of things here and then craig just to the left there's a little log in the water there's a ginormous terrapin look at that that must be one of the biggest terrapins i've ever seen it almost looks like it is a tortoise that has wedged itself on a log yes i'm talking about you that is very 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 big just doing a bit of leg stretching yeah kick back it kicks practicing its strokes it must have a swimming lesson later oh and there's hippos look at the hippopotamus just in front of the lodge that's Chitra, Chitra safari lodge that you can see there and the hippos are on the other side of the dam today and standing in the shallow water but this is extremely beautiful look at that one out of the water that one's covered in scars too it's obviously been having a battle with somebody a couple of days ago maybe even a few weeks ago but hippos heal relatively quickly so i'm not too concerned about them and i think if we sit here for long enough we might be lucky and we might get to see some interesting action now I, I want to draw your attention away one last time back towards this log i got distracted there is a bird two birds sitting on the edge on the left hand side can you see that there craig yes those two these are ones that might, might be some new ones for your list pa, pa. <laughs> pied wagtails is the word that i was trying to get out of my mouth how cool is that and they've got a lovely call too off you go so for those of you who have never seen pied wagtails before there we go there's two well another bird to add to your list but this is quite spectacular archie and a fish eagle and an african fish eagle my goodness we're going to be here for the rest of the afternoon aren't we that's beautiful this one sitting here now i can't tell you unfortunately if it's a male or female african fish eagle the female is larger but you can really only tell when they're sitting together you can see which one's slightly bigger and there is a pair of them that live around here there's the other one craig can you see i've just spotted it up on that marula tree that dead marula and that's the other one but they are beautiful birds aren't they they're really quite lovely alice are you still here oh just checking <laughs> I was just checking that Alice hadn't fallen asleep on me there for a moment, but she hasn't. Alice is also directing the show, and I'm just teasing her. And then there are some Egyptian geese. I'm just showing you everything at the moment. If you look straight ahead down there, down wee, all the way over there, we've got a family of about 355 Egyptian geese, and that's only a third of the population that live around here. And also a little three-banded plover running amongst them as well. And they're feeding at the moment. Looks like they're actually eating the algae. Uh, that's sort of plaguing the Chitwa Dam. Is that delicious? Come on, 
Come on, Egyptian geese, eat as much as you can. We need to get rid of it. Oh, behind us, apparently. Sorry about that. We had a little dip in signal there, but we're back on it again. Now, the hippo that just called behind us, I'm wondering if these lot over here are going to respond because it's a different group. And because Chitwa Dam is so big, it is able to sort of uh, house homes for many different families of hippos. And I can't see any big bulls just yet. That one that had all the cuts on its back we saw a moment ago was, would most certainly be a bull. It's very unusual to see a female that looks like the big bull. There's so many big hippo there, it's actually quite difficult to tell. That guy over there looks quite large, the one in the middle, so that could be the bull. Hello. My goodness, one, two, three, four, six. I counted about six or seven there, but it's hard to tell. They keep going up and down the water. Now, Jason, you're wondering if I've ever seen an albino hippo. I have not seen an albino hippo before. I think that would be a very unfortunate uh, situation for a hippo to get itself into. Not that it would be able to help its, you know, choose its coloration. It's all genetics, of course. But hippos have got exceptionally sensitive skin, as is, to the sun. Now, I imagine if you were very pale in color, you'd get extremely sunburnt, and I think you'd have to live underneath the hanging branches for your entire life. There would be no sunbathing for you. I think I'd actually just go and cover myself in mud, to be honest. But these guys are not quite waking up just yet. They're just resting for the moment. It's lovely, isn't it? I think... How quiet is that? Very quiet. As I, it always happens to me every time I say, let's, let's listen to the beautiful, peaceful bush. There's nothing beautiful and peaceful about it because all the birds go quiet. Even the Egyptian geese stopped cackling and that's very unusual for them because they're the ones that are always chirping and making a noise. But could you imagine waking up to a view like this? Imagine standing on that deck sipping a cup of coffee or having a gin and tonic or a strawberry daiquiri whatever you may like to drink and just enjoying the view with the hippos with the egyptian geese with the crocodile and waking up to that <coughs> call of the beautiful african fish eagle it's basically paradise well to me it's paradise now and um so yeah, it's plenty, and, and Craig actually said literally about five minutes ago, he is waiting for the day that he can see an African fish eagle swoop down and catch a fish between its talons. So Craig, I hope that you and I are on the same vehicle when that day happens, because I've also been waiting, and I've been waiting almost six years now to see something like that, but I'm very patient. Perhaps it's a sign that I need to go to the Okavango Delta and uh, experience it there. Uh, I unfortunately saw many fish eagles eating fish in the lower Zambezi National Park, but I wasn't quick enough and I kept missing them as they were swooping down and catching them. And they're fish eagles, and it's the same thing in the Okavango Delta. They're like turtle doves. They're around every single corner. There are so many of them. And we're lucky we've got a resident pair that live here at Chitwa Dam, so we can get our fix. There's also a pair that live around Sydney's dam, which we see occasionally too. But this dam is full of life this afternoon. So many different birds, so many different mammals. It's great. Oh, wow. Now, Chris Pistorius, you said that you once saved a fish eagle chick before, and it was the size of a chicken. Well, good on you for rescuing a beautiful bird like that. I think I would also uh, try and save a fish eagle chick. And that's quite interesting. So, Chris, you've got to let us know, did you, did you manage to successfully uh, rear it, or did you hand it off to perhaps a rehabilitation center? Because young birds are very, very tricky to try and raise. I've attempted many times from hardy dars to weavers that have fallen out of nests and things like that, and they're not the easiest things to keep alive, unfortunately.
quite nice. Ah, and Chris, you've said uh, that you actually handed it over to uh, a bird of prey sanctuary. Well, good on you. Thank you very much for keeping the population alive. That's really, really quite nice to hear. What a beautiful afternoon at the dam.